Most of us who have lived with the events of 9-11 have, as a result, experienced some kind of trauma. It can be very difficult to come to terms with what actually happened at the World Trade Center. In fact, someone told me recently, I wouldn't believe what you're telling me even if it were true. Our petition signers with psychological expertise have stepped forward to offer their insight. While this segment is clearly outside the knowledge base of the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, these experts in psychology highlight their valuable experience for us as to why this evidence can still be so difficult for people to accept. As we know, the horrors of what happened on 9-11 were televised all over the world, and they were televised, in fact, live. We witnessed the deaths of almost 3,000 of our fellow Americans. We know this had a very um, severe and traumatic impact on a large a majority of the population. At this point, we have nine years of hard scientific evidence that disproves the government theory about what happened on September 11th, and yet people continue to be either oblivious to the fact that this information exists or completely resistant to looking at this information. So the question becomes why? Why is it that people have so much trouble hearing this information? From my work, I think we would be remiss not to look at the impact of trauma. Many people respond to these truths in a very deep way. Some have a visceral reaction like they've been punched in the stomach. To begin to accept the possibility that the government was involved is like opening Pandora's box. If you open the lid and peek in a little bit, it's, it, it's gonna challenge some of your fundamental beliefs about the world. If we can think of our worldview as being sort of our mental and emotional home, I think all of us will do just about anything to defend our homes, to defend our families. And, and so I see that with people, and I saw that with myself when my brother tried to talk with me about it, of don't mess with me, don't mess with my home, don't mess with my comfort with how things are. About a week later, I read a lengthy article by Professor Griffin um, about why he believes the official account of 9-11 cannot be true. And it was a very well-researched article. It was in my office at the time. I sat there and I felt my stomach churning. I thought maybe I was going to be sick. And I leaped out of my chair and ran out the door and took a, a long walk around the block, around several blocks, um, and just broke down. I understand now that what was happening was my worldview about my government being in some way my protector, almost like a parent, had been dashed. And uh, it was like being cast out into the wilderness, I think is the closest way to describe that feeling. And I sobbed and I sobbed, felt like the ground had completely disappeared beneath my feet. And and I knew at some point during the walk that I knew that I was going to have to become active in educating other people about this, that there was, that for me to retain any sense of integrity, I was going to have to take some action. I couldn't just let something like this go. When we hear information that contradicts our worldview, social psychologists call the resulting insecurity cognitive dissonance. For example, with 9-11, we have one cognition, which is what the official story of 9-11, what our government told us, what our media, media repeated to us over and over, that 19 Muslims attacked us. On the other hand, we have what scientists, researchers, architects, engineers are now beginning to tell us, which is that there is evidence that shows that the official story cannot be true. So now we've lost our sense of security. We are starting to feel vulnerable. Now we're confused. 9-11 Truth challenges the beliefs that our country protects us and keeps us safe and that America is the good guy. When your beliefs are challenged, fear and anxiety are created. In response to that, our psychological defenses kick in and they protect us from these emotions. Denial, which is probably the most primitive psychological defense, is the one most likely to kick in when our beliefs are challenged. 
and it's a very, very uncomfortable state to be in. And eventually, our mind shuts off. Just like when a computer is overloaded, our minds get overloaded. We can't handle it anymore, and we shut down. And what some of us will tend to do is deny the evidence that's coming our way and stick to the original story, the official story, and to try to regain our equ equilibrium in that way. Another thing we can do is decide to look at the conflicting evidence and be sincere and be open-minded and look at both sides of the issue and then make up our own mind about what reality is. Here are a few of those, of those spontaneous initial reactions to hearing the contradictory evidence about 9-11. I don't want to know the truth or I'd become too negative and psychologically go downhill. I'm not sure I want to know. If this is true, then up would be down and down would be up. My life would never be the same. They say, this is the way the world works, and I'm, I'm convinced this is the right way the world works. 9-11 doesn't fit into that paradigm, so I don't need to look at the evidence. Fran, I refuse to believe that that many Americans could be that satanically treasonous. Someone would have talked, but these are beliefs. They are not scientific facts. But these beliefs do keep us from looking at the empirical evidence. Whenever we say, I refuse to believe, we can be sure that the evidence that's coming our way is not bearable and that it's, going, it's conflicting with our worldview much too much. As I thought about all of these responses, I realized that what is common to every one of them is the emotion of fear. People are afraid of being ostracized, they're afraid of being alienated, they're afraid of being shunned, they're afraid of their lives being inconvenienced, they'd have to change their lives, they're afraid of being confused, they're afraid of psychological deterioration, they're afraid of feeling helpless and vulnerable. And they're afraid that they won't be able to handle the feelings that are coming up. None of us want to feel helpless and vulnerable. Healing comes through ex facing the truth, experiencing it, allowing the feelings to come in, so that if there are feelings of fear that perhaps these events were caused by something that we haven't thought about yet, dark elements within our society, for example, we'll let that come in and explore it. Let the light shine on whatever happened. This will be the most healing process. The Germans did this after their war. The South Africans did this after apartheid. Reconciliation through the truth is what uh, is a deep path to psychological recovery from the myths and lies around which this historic event has been cloaked in the official view. One of the ways to deal with a trauma is to find the answers. That's why I think it is of such importance to have a comprehensive investigation. To work together to expose what happened regardless of where the evidence takes us. That's what we expect in our state government, law enforcement. I think that by putting science together with the law, we will have a psychological healing around the impossible cognition that has been produced on that day. After World War II, uh, part of the way that uh, Jewish people honored the dead was by making sure that the truth was known and that the value of these people was respected. Not pursuing the truth about 9-11 disrespects the value of the life of the people that died. Thinking that we're above uh, such things, that it could happen in other countries, but it couldn't happen here, that's a lack of humility, and that's excessive pride. And so not being able to see our dark side or our weaknesses is the most dangerous thing. A feature of American history that makes us uh, particularly uh, liable to this pride is this notion that's, of, that's called exceptionalism that America is the exceptional nation. 
And that began from the beginning as, the, as this country was uh, formed. Uh, the people would say, well, there was so much evil in the European country, so much uh, cheating, so much uh, lying, so much uh, using the people for the ruler's purposes, but not in America. We have leaders that are free from those sins. So I think this has made 9-11 um, particularly difficult for Americans. So we need to understand that questioning is, uh, is patriotic. Questioning is what we're supposed to do as citizens. That's our duty. One thing that has become important for me personally is to educate myself, is to take responsibility. Um, there's that wonderful quote from Mahatma Gandhi where he said that we must be the change that we wish to see in the world. When we come to the national level, when something like 9-11 happens, we need to be sure that we have a real investigation into who the perpetrators are, and then we need to be sure that those perpetrators are held legally accountable. It's part of the healing process on the individual level as on the collective level. We need the truth in order to heal.